Thank you to everyone who has bought some training and thank you to the Nerd Tribe for your well-constructed comments. Today's video, the American middle class has experienced a 75% reduction in income based upon inflation. First of all, I got a few things I want to share. I thoroughly enjoy the well-constructed comments. To the nerd tribe, keep doing that. I don't know what it is with some of you who want my attention so bad that you will lie, but just stop it. Just stop it. I'm not even gonna go into what happened today because this is the new direction I'm going in. Like, I'm not going to waste time on silly people. But here's the thing. I have B-School for Hustlers and the corporate game. I have two other channels that I don't have this type of content on. And neither one of those channels gets the views that this channel gets because I have a wide variety of content on this channel. Those channels are business channels. How to start a business, how to play the corporate game, totally different content. So if you a person who's like, wants me to spin rainbows and pretend that there are unicorns running around the room and everything is rosy when I actually know that's not true. Now, here's the thing. Is inflation impacting me? No. Is inflation making me change how I live my life? Mm -mm. I don't even feel inflation. Not even feeling it. However, just because I am good doesn't mean that the person next to me is good. There's a whole bunch of empty apartments in my building. A lot of people have moved out. And I've heard of conversations on the elevator where people are moving out because of the rent increases. So inflation is impacting many, many people. Many, many, many people. And this is something that came to me today. I have a wide spectrum of friendships, relationships, and acquaintances. And someone that I know who's homeless was living in a place, the landlord sold the property and the rent went up 300 bucks per month. And she had to move. And her kids had to move in with their father. Well, guess what happened? The father is renting and his landlord has recently sold a property and his rent's gone up 500 bucks per month. So lightning has struck that family twice. Pow, 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 pow. And one of the reasons I maintain and keep these relationships is so I have an accurate pulse of what's happening in the economy. And with inflation, inflation is still a monster. Inflation is eradicating people's incomes because here's the thing, and this is the big thing. Most people just have one source of income. That's their job. And if they're married, they have two incomes, two jobs. And one of the things that is happening in America right now that people are not ready for is every bad thing that we have in the economy is going to get much, much worse after the election. And this is something that, you know, like I have people who are like, you know, Christmas people are gonna buy presents. Absolutely. There are gonna be people who are gonna spend money for Christmas, there's gonna be sales and Christmas trees. However, what was happening since 2012 
which each Christmas season got better and better and better until COVID. And, you know, let's say you're used to a 30% increase for Christmas. And that's what it's t- historically been about 30% increase year over year. So if you go from a 30% increase to a 2% increase, that's like a 28% reduction. And what we're going to see, because Walmart is doing some interesting things with their stop ordering, because Walmart, Target, Costco, they have too much inventory. So they've marked their inventory down and they're having a sale and they're canceling orders. So right now we're in a kind of quiet before the storm because what's going to happen after the election 2023, because see, you've not seen the massive layoffs because this is why people don't want to call what we're in a recession. Well, you know, yeah, we got this, we got this, we got this, but we, but unemployment is extremely low. And at the moment, that is true. There are many businesses struggling to hire people. 2023, that's gonna change. It's gonna change. Um, Once we start having significant layoffs with Walmart, Target, UPS, FedEx, because FedEx is not ramping up for the fourth quarter. I've got some data points that UPS was business as usual. And FedEx and UPS have vastly different business models because UPS, if you haven't noticed, they deliver deliver a lot of Amazon products, while FedEx doesn't have that contract. So UPS may be better insulated against the downturn than FedEx because of that Amazon. That Amazon contract is huge. That is a 50 state, every city contract. That is a massive contract. And UPS has that contract. I literally see the UPS truck here six days a week, sometimes seven. That's a lot of deliveries. So that's what UPS got going on. But here's the thing, and this is one of the things that uh, I'm getting ready to get into is how to make more money through business. Because right now, everyone thinks being a real estate investor or a trader, is the fastest way to make money. I don't think those occupations are the fastest way to make money. They are sexy and they're heavily marketed. Recently, I saw a lot of people who had Airbnb properties take their properties off Airbnb and go back to long-term rentals. Now, if Airbnb is so great, why are all these people doing this? I would think the hassle factor, because I don't do Airbnb, so I don't know. But I've noticed that a lot of people are taking their properties off Airbnb and going for long-term rentals. I'm seeing them on Zillow. I'm seeing people who have these Airbnbs that are fully furnished, and they will put them on Zillow for some ridiculous monthly rate. And one I was watching, they've cut the price by $3,000 because they were asking like $6,500 for this. And they didn't take the furniture out. They left the furniture in. So we, I don't know. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think with COVID has opened up people's eyes to how financially fragile the average person is. Because me, 2019, I had a heart attack. Didn't work for seven months. Did I lose my cars? No. Did I lose my house? No. 
for seven months, I was just recur worried about recovering because I had some wild stuff going on those seven months. I mean, strange things were happening with my body. I remember one morning I got out to bed to go to the bathroom and I'm halfway to the bathroom. I get dizzy. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor. And then I'm crawling back to bed. I'm just like, there, there was all kinds of stuff going on with me. And that was my biggest and primary concern. My concern was not financial. Didn't even think about money. Was it? Because here's one of the reasons. And I want you guys to listen to me. Really, really listen to me. I don't have a lot of bills. I just don't. I've got life insurance, health insurance, cell phone bill, Georgia Power, rent, car insurance. cell phone, like, like literally, I don't have, I don't think I have 10 bills. And because reason, like one of the things I work really hard to is to keep my financial life fairly simple. I don't have any exotic income schemes or exotic investments or nothing. It's pretty simple, but literally, if I just sat here, I can list all of my monthly expenditures, expenditures. And one of the things I've learned is when you don't have a lot of bills, it's very easy to save money. It's ridiculously easy to save money. And one of the things that I did during my little break is I got rid of two storage units. I got rid of a car. I got rid of expenses because like I said, you know, I keep showing y'all this and I don't think y'all are really getting it, but this is the credit card binder, right? $750,000 worth of open available credit, right? And this is kind of what I'm talking about. I have the resource, credit is a resource. I could go out and buy all kinds of crazy stuff on credit, because that's just my personal credit. I got like 400K in business credit, but I'm chill. Like, will I will use, like, go ahead and have this conversation. Uh, going forward, like I have literally taken most of my, I have, I have that personal credit card in my wallet as a backup. Like literally I have this one because I really, I really like it. I think that's a beautiful card. I really like it. So those are the personal credit cards and everything else I have in my wallet is business. Right now, this is the daily driver. I've almost spent 15,000 on this <laughs> bad boy to get my um, sign up bonus. And that's another thing. Now what's going to happen once I get that sign up bonus, this is going to become the daily driver. This is going to become the daily driver. And like I can tell you guys, if you want to max out your reward points, pick one rewards credit card and use it for everything, everything. Because my monthly spend, because you know, you got to pay your car insurance, you gotta pay your electric bill, you gotta pay your cell phone bill, you gotta pay. I, I wish I could pay my health insurance bill. They will not take a credit card. I have to pay that through ACH. But um, virtually all of my bills, I'm able to pay via credit card. And that's what I do. And that's how I run my management. But here's the issue with middle-class America. No. 
I want you to think of a duck. Think of a, a duck in a lake, right? And it's hunting season. This duck is completely unaware there are hunters in the bushes. Then, boom, and the duck is dead. That duck is middle class America. Middle class America is completely unaware of the disaster, calamity, until boom, it hits. And at that point, they become aware. Whereas me, I'm always kind of like, what could happen? What could happen? This is one of the reasons, like when I had my heart attack, and the reason I didn't lose anything is because at that time, my bills were, once again, pretty low, and I had massive cash reserves. So I was good. And here's the thing. You see people, what do they say about an emergency fund? Three to six months, minimum three months. All right, I'm here, here, here's the thing. You need 12 to 24 months of a emergency fund. See, that's the thing that people don't want to hear because it's like, what, what, what do you mean I need 12 to 24 months emergency fund? You don't want to hear that because everyone is looking for simple, easy to digest solutions because for the average person to save up 12 to 24 months of an emergency fund, it's going to take years gonna take years and no one wants to hear that they want that kind of solution just all right we're done we're good and this is why in 2023 as the income because I don't think inflation is going to disappear anytime soon I don't think it's going to tamp down anytime soon 2023 as your income is consistently reduced by inflation as the price of the things that you need shelter food gas it's going to keep going up it's going to keep going up and the stuff you don't need like i got an 85 inch television there that i paid for that television the same thing i paid for a 65 inch television seven years ago so stuff you don't need, that will be on sale. Televisions, perhaps computers, not Apple cell phones. Uh, have you ever noticed, and this is something that's funny. Apple has never had a sale. I want you to really think about that. Apple has never had a sale. And one of the things you're going to, and Apple is a trillion dollar company. The only, I think this, there's two, I think it's Apple and Tesla, maybe trillion dollar, I'm not sure. And I started to think, Rolls Royce has never had a sale. Porsche has never had a sale. Ferrari has never had a sale. And these brands are so backlog because um, I'm getting another Porsche after because my current Porsche should be here at the end of the month and I've already ordered another one and I was thinking of ordering the Porsche electric car it's a two almost three year waiting list so what that tells me is quality and exclusivity survives a recession. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Because once again, there's always gonna be a group of people who will have money to do whatever they wanna do regardless of the economy. And I feel that if someone actually sat down and gave it to you straight and gave you the reality and the gravity of the situation, you would be better prepared. Because like I said, 
Middle class America is like that duck in the pond, completely just wa watching their TikToks, uh, playing around on Facebook, playing around on YouTube, just then, boom! And then next thing you know, they're like, whoa, I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. And that is why, cause like I knew I blew a whole bunch of people's minds with that 12 to 24 months uh, emergency fund. Because that's how, you know, cause once again, all these folks, and I put in the community section, uh, Alex Becker is a YouTuber who is heavy in the crypto space. Alex Becker put up a video two months ago where he sold all his crypto, sold all his stocks, and he stopped making videos. Alex is a pretty smart guy. And I feel that Alex recognized what was coming and he, he took action. He sold his stuff, he got out, and he's focusing on running his business. And he's not making YouTube content because I feel Alex is a person of character and he just cannot make these videos and lie to people. Once again, he's like, sell everything. None of this, buy the dip. Because let, let, let's talk about that. Now, there are many of you guys who are very educated in the markets, the stock market, stocks and stuff. You're very educated. You know a lot. You know about price action and company earnings and stuff. How much money has that made you? And I'm going somewhere with this. I'm about to start cooking. See, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. But I can guarantee you I make more money from the knowledge that I have than me, you know, like, like I said, you know, with trading, I'm not going to spend a ton of time trading. I'm just not because I can do this thing over here and make way more money than I can playing around with trading. Trading is something I'm going to do as a hobby. I'm going to take my time to learn how to do it. But once again, like the sitting duck middle class, many of you stock market people have been operating in an 11 year bull market. Now, just like Alex, who's a very smart guy, saw the writing on the wall and he, he just stopped making content. See, here's the thing. You guys are operating on the past with no regard to the future. And because you were participating in an 11 year bull market, you're not as smart as you think you are. I know that hurts. I know that hurts, but we're going to see who are the real tacticians, the real strategists, because once again, I've said this and people will come in like, you don't know, you don't know the markets. You shouldn't even speak on the markets. The market, this is the longest the market has been down since uh, the great recession. And each day, it keeps getting longer and longer. And there are billionaires, people with more money than me and you combined, are saying, we're about to enter this 10 year period where the market's gonna be trading sideways. A lot of people are saying that. Kathy Woods of ARC is freaking out. Open letter, she's freaking out because see, during this 11 year bull run, a fool can make money. You can hold your nose and just point on the wall of the stock and make money. But now you're gonna have to have some real skills to make money in the market. And understand, there are people with those skill sets. There are people who are making them plenty of money right now. Plenty of money. Because they are really savvy, skilled stock market technicians. They're not watching YouTube. They're not regurgitating, buy the dip, keep buying the dip. Because as I have said, the, wall, the real estate trapper has said, 
you buy the dip, it gets dippier. And like, I, I have two test case. I spent a thousand bucks on Apple stock. After I bought it, it dipped. And I bought uh, SCHD, which is a dividend ETF. And literally after I bought, it dipped. So that's just $2,000. That's just some play money. That's chump change. Just because I'm actually in the market. I'm in the market and I'm seeing the dip. And every morning I wake up and I look and Apple hasn't really recovered. And then this one I just bought. Um, my I got my market confirmation order today. And I will not be doing any buy and holding stocks. I know... I could say for at least 24 months. It ain't even, ain't even a plan because as I go ahead and invest money in the market, I have a very good chance of putting a thousand dollars in there and then it being worth less the very next day. So all of you people with your stock market skills, please put in the comment, how much money, not percentages, but how much actual money you made. And also put in there how much money you started with. Because see, when I start saying, breaking it down like that, and it's like, hey, how much money did you start with? How much money you made? That's when people start running away. Like, I don't wanna talk about that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna mention that. Because when you start saying like, I started with, $30 and now I have 700. It's not that impressive. Not that impressive at all. And that's one thing I've noticed that people don't want to actually talk dollar figures. Cause like I said, I'm not going to get into, um, the people who want my attention, the people who will literally straight up lie. I mean, it's, it's, it's obscene that People are so into the pretend land of the internet. Uh, the credit plug, the, the real estate trapper, and myself have all shown you receipts. Receipts. Yet you continue to listen to people who will never, ever, ever show a receipt because they're lying to you. Because, um, I forget this statement, but a friend of mine had this statement. People would rather believe in pretty lies than the painful truth. And that's where we are. And this is why, as the middle class, you're that sitting duck in the pond, just doing what you're doing, then boom! And next thing you know, you're scrambling at 100 miles an hour trying to rectify your life because you were unprepared, because you were unaware. And like, once again, yeah, you know, people are going to spend stuff for Christmas. But once again, if you are in a position where inflation isn't touching you, you're blessed. You're in a good situation. I understand. I'm there. But once again, look outside of your peer group and you will see that there are some people's world on fire. Right now, the number of people who are becoming homeless every month is rising. The number of new first time homeless people is at an epidemic high. And in 2023, after the government prop up program, and the Fed repo operations, all this stuff, we, we're gonna get back to some real numbers. It ain't gonna be pretty. It ain't gonna be pretty. It ain't gonna be pretty at all. Because right now, real wages are down, inflation is eating into your money, and many people are just like those ducks in the pond, just sitting, loading around, and then when it really gets dire, Hunter comes, boom, that's when we want to get active. That's when the buck, the ducks start flying away, the ones that weren't hit. But the duck that got hit, dead duck in the water, waiting for the laboratory retriever to come big scoop him up. 
So that's what's going on. And I'm telling you, right now is the quiet before the storm. What's going on right now is only a little bit of what is to come. Because I've been doing this for a while. I've been looking at the economy. Once again, I was the one that was talking about the economy was weak before COVID. And that's why COVID damn near took the economy out. And once again, you can make money because like I got channels. I don't even talk about this stuff on B school for hustlers or the corporate game. I don't even talk about this stuff. This is, this is what's funny. Those channels and help you and instruct you on how to start a business. And frankly, I don't get a lot of views on those channels, but when I'm over here talking about reckless billionaire, I'm talking about, uh, the hobo sexual, I get tons of views on those topics, but anything that's, you know, trying to instruct you how to get out of this mess and doing the hard work. Yeah, I want to hear that. Well, some of you, there's some of you who do hear it. There's some of you who do pay heed, but right now is like I said, it's just a quiet before the storm. And uh, I'm getting ready to exit my break. Um, and we're going to get into some new training because, um, one of the things that I have noticed is that people don't really understand business. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you want to start a business and what's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and get your LLC. You're going to do whatever you need to do. And let's say you want to get into selling a product. The first thing you're going to do is hunt for a product to sell and buy that product. And at that moment, you, you're hustling backwards. First thing you should start with is an audience. That's the first thing you should start off with. Like, who do I want to serve? Who do I want to create a product for? There are plenty of content creators, like in the female space, who have business oriented videos aimed straight at women, and they're growing like crazy because that's who their audience is. That's who they want to serve. But if you just want to go out and find some stuff and get it cheap and hopefully sell it, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle because you don't know what you're doing. Like I have literally gone at length at the importance of marketplace research, knowing your audience, like with the car rental business. If I had known what to look for, because once again, when I got in the car rental business, I had no clue how the business worked. But literally after six months, I was like, my customer base for hire car is trash. They rent the cars on the full tank of gas, bring them back on fumes. They wreck the cars, they blow tires. I'm just sitting there like, I had 31 cars and at one point I had 12 wrecked cars. And I was like, oh my God, I had no clue to what I was getting myself into. But now I know because I've been there and done that and I will never ever rent out another car in my life. I'm just not doing it because I just don't like it as a business. And this is something that's funny. The guy Lucky Lopez, Lucky Lopez used to be automotive life. This is what's funny. A lot of people who got into renting cars are now trying to get out from exotics to econo boxes. They're trying to get out. And I understand why, because a lot of people who are renting exotics, Turo, if you didn't know, Turo now has a limit. You cannot put a $500,000 Rolls Royce on Turo. They're not gonna cover it. They're not gonna cover it. So, one of the things that you have to understand with business, because this, this is going to be the new training. And if you get into the program, you will get the new training. I'm going to teach people how to create a low cost structure business. What exactly is that? You have a business where let's say it costs you 
1,000 bucks a month. We're just using numbers for illustration purposes. But that $1,000 a month and your sweat equity creates a business that makes $10,000 a month. Those are the kind of business models that I do. Toro sucks as a business model because of the high cost basis. Real estate, the number of people who are getting out of real estate is going nuts right now. Because, I mean, like for me, and this is something I have done in my life, to go out and get a house and to get a mortgage on it and then rent it out for, you make two or $300 more than the mortgage, that business sucks from, from a cash flow perspective. Yes, you have the house, you have someone else paying your mortgage and you're growing wealth in terms of equity. And you know, and with COVID, that, that a lot of people who were positioned made a lot of money that way. But historically, it is an extremely slow and inefficient way to get wealthy. It really, really is. But you're gonna see, let's just call it, we're gonna see in all marketplaces, the skilled, the savvy, the technicians, like I said, Alex Becker, he's, he's a pretty smart guy. And Alex saw the tea leaves and he sold everything and got out the market and got out of crypto. And he has not been back going on three months. See, this is what the smart people are doing. They're not sitting there, buy on the dip. You know, historically, historically, 11 years, we had this bull market where a fool can make money. Now, you're gonna have to be skilled, successful, and you're gonna have to be someone with some skill.